colleague, Roddy Bell Shelton Biggs, who was passing through the Tri-Cities after attending an installation celebration with me yesterday in Georgia. They have written several pieces that contribute to today's service and it's a topic near and dear to their heart and mine. Greetings, dear ones. It is so great to be back in this space to recognize so many familiar faces. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Johnny Perichel and Biggs. My pronouns are they and them. Tiffany mentioned that we went down for an installation service yesterday. What she did not name was how this time last year, many of you provided me home hospitality as I was a summer chaplain at JCMC, and I will never forget that. The words for our welcome this morning are titled Belonging, starts with being who you are, and the words that I wrote for this occasion. With these words, know that you belong. <coughs> Receive them and know that you are held in love, that you can be precisely who you are meant to be. Belonging, beloveds, we all seek it. Here in this sacred space, you belong. Now, beloveds, the invitation is there for you to settle your mind, to close your eyes, to focus them softly on a face or a space near you. If closing your eyes does not feel right in your body, as only you know. Beloved, belonging starts with knowing who you are. Are you young and full of wonder full of energy? Are you older, full of wonder, full of energy? Are you young, low on wonder, depleted of energy? Or are you older, low on wonder, and depleted of energy? Are you a sister, a sibling, a brother? Are you a mother, a father, or a guardian? Are you someone who worries? Are you someone who loves? Are you someone who the world has made to feel unworthy of love? Are you cis? Are you trans? Are you non-binary, straight, queer, or questioning? Or are you completely unsure? Are you Christian, pagan, <coughs> Buddhism, Muslim, atheist? or something else entirely. The truth is, beloveds, we are so many things. We hold so many labels all at once. We choose those labels for others and for ourselves. We place them on to others. They dance around in our minds and form our beings. Who are you? What are the names, the labels you choose for yourself that call you into being? In doing so, you are loved into being. And we love you into being as well. When you're ready, return, look around, feel the love, and know that you belong. So come, beloveds. Define who we are, who you are, in this sacred space of belonging. Let us worship together. And now, take a moment for silent contemplation, prayer, and meditation.
are building a community that invites us to belonging and authenticity around a very specific vision. The words of that vision are printed in your bulletin, and I invite you to read this vision statement along with me as we light our chapters. <coughs> We work, we work together, together as, as a church, church to transform ourselves, our community, and our world by sharing love, pursuing justice, and seeking wonder. Loving. That's a good label. 
That's a good label. Well, we're going to have a chance to play with labels later today with um, the write-on name tags that are in the bulletins um, after the sermon part of this service. And if you're so young that you can't like write your own labels, I'm sure your parents will help you. And after the service, if you show the name tag that you made to Justin, he will let you pick a prize from the prize basket. Can How I put a prize to you, Tiffany? Oh. <laughs> yes, Roddy, go ahead. Well, if Roddy and soup cans are teaching me the importance of embracing the labels we choose, then Karis and Annie DeFranco are teaching me the power of rejecting labels that are limiting. I am not a pretty girl That is not what I do I ain't no damsel in distress And I don't need to be rescued So put me down, punk Wouldn't you prefer a maiden fair? Isn't there a kitten stuck up a tree somewhere? I am not an angry girl But it seems like I've got everyone fooled Every time I say something they find hard to hear They chuck it up to my anger, never to my own fear And imagine you're a girl Just trying to come clean Knowing full well they prefer you dirty And smiling I'm sorry, but I'm not a maiden fair, and I'm not a kitten stuck up a tree somewhere. Generation wouldn't be caught dead working for the man. And generally, I'd agree with them. Trouble is, you gotta have yourself an alternative plan. And I have earned my disillusionment. I've been working all my life I'm a patriot And I've been fighting the good fight And what if there's no damsel in distress And what if I, and what if I called your bluff Don't you think a kitten figures out how to get down Whether or not you show up Today, Kim and Mark Ray 
and Betty and Greg Kramer are they're all celebrating their 40th wedding anniversaries. Uh, Gary McConnell shares that she is recovering from surgery and progressing well. Uh, she would love to have some walking pa uh, partners, one to two days a week, and could meet in a park or neighborhood. Um, and her contact information is in the directory. So if you want to help Gary out, uh, go walk in with her. Reach out to Gary. Tristan shares, my three-year-old nephew had a successful open heart surgery on Friday. Yeah. He was going to come home this weekend, but a small fever started. So please keep him in your thoughts as he's going through recovery. Today we also uh, remember the people of Maui. We grieve with the people and the land. We see in this tragedy the complexities of the intersections between colonialism, classism, and environmental destruction present. Maui, our hearts are with you, and we will be sharing information about how to help out if you want to this week in the E! News. Closer to home, we also remember the people of Jonesboro this week who have experienced some damage from Monday night's tornado. The loss of the Shanks Oak, a Tennessee Urban Forestry Council heritage tree, is especially hard. This tree was known as the oldest resident of Jonesboro and was estimated to be somewhere between 500 and 800 years old and the tree holds special significance to some members of our congregation. I've been getting regular updates about Frank Schuler all week, and I am happy to pass them on to you all. He's out of the ICU, and he's even out of the hospital, having been transferred to a rehabilitation center. Everyone who knows Frank and knows how committed he is to exercise and physical activity, so we're all feeling pretty positive about his rehab work and they report that every day he's getting stronger. And a harder story. Matthew Crandall shares the following. I would like to ask everyone to keep the two co-workers in mind in their thoughts. First, Austin and his fiance just had their first child and he was born not breathing and with internal ulcers. His fiance is in recovery um, and the baby did stop bleeding this Thursday but is still in the NICU. So that's got to be very harrowing for them. And a second coworker of Matthew, Drew, his son was diagnosed with childhood leukemia this past week. And they are taking it day by day. <coughs> And a great joy, because life is like that, right? We have the hard stuff and the good stuff, and it all just kind of comes together. Um, I'm pleased to announce that we have a new baby in our community. He's not with us today because he's only five days old. <laughs> <laughs> and mom is still recovering. Um, but Nash Andrew was born on August 15th at 11.35 a.m. 8 pounds, 12 ounces, 21 inches long. They are home and mom is recovering. This collection of candles, I mean this whole, half, so, half of this whole site is already lit. Um, this collection from national to local, from the greatest joys to the greatest tragedies and everything in between reminds us just how complex and diverse life can be and that we are all here for it and we are all here for each other in the midst of it all. If you wish to light your own candle, approach the side of the table that is closest to you and the candle keeper will assist you. Please light the candles at the back of the table first so that no one has to reach over an open flame. And if you wish to light a candle, if you wish for us to light a candle for you, Please raise your hand until I acknowledge you, and I will light a candle for you. Our community is so much larger 
than just those of us who are in the building this morning. So we light one of the large center candles to hold space for those who are not physically present with us, but are ever in our hearts. ancestry and my trauma to assume who I am and yeah some of their assumptions may be accurate and others are far from it others may want me to conform to their societal understandings their expectations ones that I never wished no wish now to do so. Many religious, social, political, and legal institutions within this nation say that I am disposable, that people I love are disposable, not worthy, not willing to be seen or heard nor understood. And that I deserved 
everything that happened to me. And there was guilt associated with that, but there shouldn't be. Some say I'm a criminal simply because I don't look like them. But you know what? No one gets to decide who I am. I get to name my own identities. I get to embrace my own truths. I get to discover my own paths. And if I want to, I get to change my labels. And so do you. For that is the truth and the beauty of our universal theology. We decide who we are. We name our labels. We own our truths. And we expect that others will honor what we tell them. For isn't that what communal love and salvation really means? So who are you, beloved? What labels do you choose? Do you name for yourself? Thank, thank you for that perspective, Roddy. Um, it's not a perspective I can offer. And I'm really grateful that you bring your unique identities to us in worship today. Thank you. So there's this funny thing about cats. They love boxes. Right? If you leave a box attended, and you have a cat, our odds are good that at some point you are going to find that cat in that box. You can just hit play and just let it go. It's just going to show us a bunch of cats in boxes as I'm talking. Right? <laughs> because really, I am amazed that when you ask the people in this congregation for pictures of cats in boxes, they deliver. <laughs> and they're all adorable. Sometimes they want to be on boxes instead of in boxes. Sometimes they find uh, little clothes boxes, Lego boxes, <laughs> two cats in one little bitty box. More rebels have to be on top of the box. I love that cat. I would die for that cat. <laughs> and sometimes they sit in cat lady boxes. Sometimes they're a little shy. And that's the cutest one right there. I just don't know what to do about that cat. So here's an interesting thing about cats. They like boxes, but they also really value their autonomy. So if you put an unboxed cat into a box, they are very likely to just jump out immediately or even struggle or resist to be put in. And matters of identity, labels, are like that too. We humans, who also value our personal autonomy so much, really don't like it when other people tell us who we are. And at the same time, we often embrace the process of labeling ourselves as ways of understanding who we are. When we are doing the labels of ourselves, we even get kind of playful sometimes with how we identify ourselves. But there is a big difference between the joy of claiming who you are yourself and the frustration of someone else telling you who you are or who you should be. We will put ourselves in boxes when those boxes help us understand ourselves. It feels good. But when someone else tries uh, to tell us who we are, when someone else tries to put us in a box that they think we should be in, it doesn't work. And we've all been there. And it doesn't feel good. I called a friend an introvert once because the way she described herself and her preferences to me sounded introverted to me. But she told me she didn't find that useful in understanding herself. It wasn't a label that she wanted. 
I thought I understood her and I put her in a box and she jumped right back out just like my cats when she rejected why she rejected that label doesn't especially matter because she has the right to define herself meaning that she decides whether the label worked for her or not I don't get to decide that and it wasn't a big deal or a dramatic exchange it was just a teeny tiny example about how we are always seeking to understand ourselves and each other through communication that is part of being in community the quest to understand our own selves is an essential part of the quest for truth and meaning that we're on and they and they drive us to hear from our companions in life about how they understand themselves this is an essential part of affirming the inherent worth and dignity of every person to tie it to our emerging value statements the center of everything that we do is love and being a part of a community that centers love means creating room for people's sacred identities a community where we feel we can take the risk of sharing our understandings of ourselves a community where we're committed to receiving each other's stories with grace and understanding where we realize that we don't have to understand someone to be understanding about them to accept them and to embrace the labels that they are choosing for themselves author Pamela Cooper White a professor of psychology and religion at Union Theological Seminary describes this quest for understanding ourselves and our identity in her essay titled complicated women multiplicity and relationality across gender and culture she sounds like a Union professor that's for sure <laughs> Dr. Cooper White describes the human psyche and especially the female human psyche as a patchwork quilt of identities. Can you imagine the patchwork that exists within you? Who are you? What different relationships and identities stitch together to make you who you are Cooper White points out that relationship is key to understanding identity whether it's because I understand myself as a mother because I have children in my life that I love and am raising or because I understand myself as a Unitarian Universalist because I found a place of belonging and acceptance where my questions could be held and my desire to make the world a better place could be shared along with other Unitarian Universalists who taught me that that's what that label meant religiously many of us here do identify as Unitarian Universalists some of us hold multiple religious identities we heard some of those in the call to worship and some of us wish I would stop using the word religious altogether <laughs> That's all right. I love that religious identity is something that we're free to explore and play with here. That it's part of the toolbox of self-discovery and it is part of the ever-changing patchwork quilt that makes us who we are. There is a really fun tool out there on the internet called the Belief-O-Matic. And there is a QR code in your bulletin that will take you right to the belief omatic website where you can answer a series of questions and they will tell you what religion you are in this moment I'm just realizing what a horrible idea it might be to invite my congregation to take a survey on what religion they are <laughs> I hope I see you all next week <laughs> 
I have taken this quiz many times in the last decade, and while Unitarian Universalism always shows up on my top three, it's not always number one. I've been directed to the liberal Quakers, who seem really cool, the Reformed Jews, who are absolutely cool, and the neo-pagans, who I've totally hung out with on occasion. And I've gotten those the last few times I've taken the quiz, and it's really fun to check out. It's also worth noting, if you do check out this quiz, and if you don't like QR codes, you can just Google it, um, it's worth noticing that the questions do reflect a Christian bias, and I think that's just reflective of the environment that we live in. It's also, especially when you get results like mine, a great reminder that no online quiz or label that comes from outside of your own truth can tell you what your heart needs or can tell you who you really are. Because this right here is what my heart needs when the belief o agrees with me and when it doesn't. This time, though, I did get Unitarian Universalist as my top-ranked result, and I was a little relieved about that. <laughs> Religious identity, the vast number of social identities Roddy demonstrated for us so well, relational identities like parent, child, friends, connections to fandoms, Myers-Briggs personality indicators, and simpler labels like loved, healing, struggling, hopeful, tired. They're all clues to understanding ourselves. And they're all invitations to others in our community to try to understand us better. And the first step is to believe each other, to be willing to work with someone's truth when they tell us who they are. Pamela Cooper White invites us to curiosity. She says, imagine yourself for a moment as more multiple than you had ever considered before. A complex quilt of subjectivities, flexible enough to bend to new circumstances, to form new relationships, drawing on an inner world of memories, experiences, and identifications. What a beautiful imagining a complex quilt of subjectives. So what makes up your complex quilt of subjectivities? I want to play with this for a moment. Inside of your bulletin today are blank name tags separated into sets of two. So you should have two sets of two. Keep one set of two for yourself. And if you have an extra and you were sharing a bulletin with someone and they need one, you can give them the other set of two. Um, in every row, there's a cup full of pens. Uh, so if you haven't like brought a pen with you, you can find a cup full of pens and grab a pen. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do with this. I am inviting you to reflect on your own complex quilt of subjectivities, the labels that you would give yourself. And Roddy modeled this beautifully in the reflection that they offered this morning. So I'm going to give you some instructions. I know we're shuffling around with our toys, and I want to make sure you hear this next part. So ask yourself, what ways would you describe yourself that are the most meaningful to you? What is something that you want someone to know about you? Take your first label, leave the second one blank, but take your first label and fill it up with this complex tapestry of your identities. Leave the second one blank for now, but all the identities that you've claimed, all the relationships that have made you who you are, all the words you want to use to describe yourself, write those down. If you're at home, you can do the same reflective exercise simply with a scratch piece of paper. So let's take a few minutes to explore this and brainstorm how you identify yourself on that first 
set on that first name tag. Okay, so you've got this set of labels now. Ones that you've chosen for yourself. How does it feel to see it all in writing? Imagine, don't have to do it, but just listen. Imagine putting this name tag on and wearing it around our church potluck picnic. How does that make you feel? Does it make you feel excited about being seen? Nervous about being judged? Curious about what other people have written on their name tags? Hopeful that maybe you'll find someone that has experiences or identities in common with you. How far you want to take this part of the exercise is completely up to you. Wear it to the potluck, throw it away, tuck it safely in a purse or a pocket. They are your labels after all. They are the boxes that you have decided to sit in for now and you get to decide how much you want people to see about you. The power is in your hands, literally in your hands as you are holding this name tag. But what about the second name tag? The second name tag, I want you to put just one thing on it. And it's the thing that you want the most to be seen about you today. Maybe it's a concrete identity like Roddy demonstrated. Maybe it's more abstract. Maybe it's relational in nature. Or maybe it's something that you have struggled to understand about yourself and you want people to know. So take another moment and write that one thing on the second name tag. And if you're feeling brave, put that name tag on. Whatever choice you make, however you choose to identify yourself, I want you to know every facet of you, seen and unseen, is honored here. You are worthy. You are loved. And the names that you choose for yourself are sacred. Thank you for adding your unique spirit to our community today. We extinguish our chalice with these words. Spirit of life, earth and sea and sky, Place of deep longing in my heart. Give me the strength and courage to speak truth through my life. For I am a creature of the universe, small but infinite. A body in the sea of life and also in the sea of itself. I am gathered. I am a gathered bit of energy and one who gathers, a creation and a creator. Let me not hold too tightly to the form or to lose the others. For we eat, for we are not a form, but a process ever changing, ever renewing. Help us see that we are neither the beginning nor the end, but something perfectly natural and imperfectly divine. May justice lead us to the calling of this moment. May wonder meet us right where we're at. May we discover our collaborators and our companions. And may love guide us on our journey of transformation. Blessed be. Amen. And don't go anywhere. Stay for potluck.